least like a short version of a, re a real life group. In, in, a, in the experience of a small jazz group, you have the, the chance to really know each other, to listen to how they play, how they improvise. It's just run by, you know, by your friends, you know, it's more of an intimate setting. In a combo, you can have the liberty to really choose what music you play, whether that be originals or whether it be by a particular artist. It's an environment where your hands are not so tied. You learn how to, to actually make music in real time. They study theory, history, improvisation, arranging. The small groups are an essential part of that. They enable students to take all they've learned and put it all together to create new music. You get to pick who you play with. You get to pick the music. You, you set up the rehearsals. You can write your own material. You can do a copy of a record if you wanted to do that. We have vocalists. We have, uh, of course, uh, you know, terrific rhythm sections, a lot of horns. You decide on the instrumentation. Uh, we get three uh, sessions where you get coached, and then you have a performance, and then we critique what you've done. We have guest artists every fall semester that come to campus for a couple of days to uh, coach all the combos and uh, do a performance. I got to work with Eddie Gomez, famous bass player, and uh, Seamus Blake when they were here last semester as a part of this program. I mean, where else do you get to do that? We have 25 different groups, small groups, that's a lot. And so th you have an opportunity to play with a lot of different people, uh, opportunity to do a lot of different material. In a small jazz group setting, you get to interact more musically, interaction between all of you. It's unlike any format that I've seen at other places. The whole small group thing is by far my favorite. It gives you a lot of insight just in like human interaction. Four measures counting off, I guess. It's a good testing place to see like what you really feel strongly about. The great thing is uh, Stefan is a wonderful pianist, so he brings a great perspective to the rhythm section. I'm a trumpet player, so I can bring the perspective from the uh, the horn players, and so you get two different ideas and two different uh, coaching, you know, from two different angles. Uh, but you got high quality uh, professors here that care about you, that want you to do well, and they do everything they can to to help you. don't really give them a lot of uh, rules about what and what not to do. Discovery uh, is really, really important to me. I think it's important for us to let the students uh, take some chances. That's the beautiful thing, is that you have control here. Maybe, like, let's just change this whole tune-up or let's just not play it. You have more, more freedom. And then whenever we have other rehearsals and somebody will pop up with an idea, like in the middle of, of playing, and then after that we're like, hey, let's do this. Or what if we try this and that, so that's how the ideas start to come about. I always try to encourage a good group communication. I try to ask them a lot of questions, why they're doing certain things, and maybe why they're not trying this. You know what I mean? Just to have a little opportunity to just kind of build and, and find ways to, you know, to kind of stack things a little bit differently, you know? Uh -huh. Maybe you can start on your own. They have an opportunity to try all sorts of musical ideas and see what works and maybe what doesn't work. Put it where you feel, where you feel like it should be. Time, volume, energy. It's, it's more of a hands-off thing, but they're trying to just shape, you know, and, and provide different ideas, which is really a healthy way to go about teaching a combo class. But when it comes to that, don't be afraid to really dig in and just just play out, you know? Their advice is always really good. They're really trying to make you play better. They're, they're both very different and very great. Rodney's approach is, I think, simple and more like idea-based. He, he'll, he'll draw you back. Stefan just like always has really great ideas in terms of like instrumentation, composition, a lot, um, in terms of like shape. Miles used to say, I'm always listening for what to leave out. Right? We have to learn, and this goes for everybody, all of us. You guys are all as a group doing a nice job playing. You really are. 
But what we need to start working on is our maturity, and that's how to use space. We talk about space and solos. Uh, we talk about momentum. We talk about pace and solos. We talk about the uh, playing with your ears and not your eyes. We talk about all these things so when you get in the real world, you'll understand exactly how to handle when it doesn't go right. And it's important when you get in a situation like that that you understand what it is you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do so they do want to call you back for the next gig. So uh, we, we try to prepare you for success no matter where you go. John, we are at your go. Really quick, it'll take the same amount of time. <laughs> All of us should be uh, looking to uh, record, record our music, record our solos, record our groups. Every spring semester, all the groups go into the recording studio and have an opportunity to record for, for one day and then also mix their projects. So they get about three to four tones, typically, in, in a given semester. And we're provided with a list of how many groups are going to be in any given semester and so then we'll kind of take what they've given us and we schedule them out. They have about an hour and 45 minutes on average to record, a little bit longer to mix. It's about two and a half hours for the mixing process. So we'll start with band number one, we'll track all 25 of them and then I switch over the studio kind of into more of a mixing mode. I reconfigure the studio, change out some of my gear, kind of get set up for mixing and then each group will come when it's their mixing slot and they come and then listen to the takes that they have, choose on whether they're keeper takes, and then we do a mix on those. Like I'll gauge the bass, like not in front of the F-hole, but in front of the bridge. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, okay. It'll just get a little more attack. You know, I kind of start with a basic balance, trying to just kind of capture what their dynamics were musically. And then we go from there and they can add their input. And we just kind of collaborate and come up with a sound that they dig and feels like, sounds like them, you know? So would you prefer that I come out of the solo softer Let's try one take doing that, and if it sounds, if it doesn't work, then we can try it the normal way. In the studio, you can really try to get more of an exact thing that you want. At Panhandle House, is a really beautiful recording studio. Uh, the musicians are separated into multiple recording rooms. There's cameras where you can see everything. The drummer's not in the room with you. It's, he's like in a warehouse. It feels slightly more disconnected, but that's also a skill. Um, sometimes your sight lines are not exactly the same as they would be if you were on the gig, right? So like those are kind of new skills that sort of have to be acquired and, and overcome. You know, it's really cool to be able to, to get everything, you know, okay, no, we don't want to take it at that tempo. Let's take it a little faster. Okay, to take two. It's not going to be 100% how you planned it every single time. And there's no reason why it would be like that in the studio. So it was, it was a really good learning experience to not to like kind of lose that attachment and just let the music have a life of its own. I have to adjust a lot. Sometimes I found myself like overcorrecting certain things because you can just hear everything that's happening. I feel like I, you play better in the, in the sessions, I guess. Maybe it's just because you're not in front of a lot of people, but I guess that's a really, that's a very useful experience for musicians. The level of musicianship at UNT is so high, but they don't have a whole lot of experience coming into like a legit studio with like quality gear and a real sound set up in a real traditional environment where the band is tracking live. And I think a lot of times when they hear themselves back, you know, with a good sound and a good mix, they're really impressed at like, wow, I sound just like my favorite artist record, you know what I mean? And it's, it's encouraging to them in that way. And I think when you sort of level the playing field and give them a really professional level recording, it just is, is a tremendous evaluation tool for their own playing, right? They can hear it and go, wow, I sound good, or I need to work on my tone, or my time, or whatever it is. It's, it's just a, a tremendous experience for everybody. So. <laughs> I was like, oh, we can do that? After taking this class about four semesters, they have a nice CD. and. Um, the experience that goes along with being in, in the studio and preparing for all of that. Everybody, all the professors especially, they're super gentle, super gentle and humble. So that's also one of the things that is just like perfect, you know, for this type of environment. It's great. You are the man. <laughs> I think it's important to educate the students uh, to become complete musicians. They get to perform in front of their peers, which is a kind of a scary thing. It's demanding to play for your peers. And since you have to do that all the time, it, uh, it's, a, it's a unique experience. 
I think uh, all the students are very supportive of each other. It's a friendly environment. And we're spoiled here. So when you leave and you go to another place, people are not as good of musicians. And that's just, that's just the truth of it. You get along extremely well with the players here. They're all high quality, but they're really good people. To be constantly surrounded by people that play uh, on such a mature level from such young players. Yeah, I play with uh, people in my small group at least, yeah, definitely this semester, all the time outside of school. And that's that's been the case with every every group I've played in. There are always like the people that I love playing with. Can, can, can I, am I still going to be playing um, a, a little bit on top of that? Or should I just... Uh, that, that... You'll make friends that you'll have for the rest of your life here that are going to be living in another town that may be calling you up and saying, hey, I need a trumpet player for this gig. I, sh I should say the level of talent, I mean, I think has been great. It's a great opportunity to um, see everyone play. Just having a class for this, you know, a lot of schools don't have classes. They don't have a group where it's, a, you know, you have to perform this many times in a semester and you have to come up with a recording. I don't know if I can really explain it to like non-musicians. A extreme musical education and I think that that is what you get when you go to UNT. I'm really grateful to Dan Hurley for starting this program. I played in a small group and remember being coached by Dan. I'm grateful to Stefan Carlson for taking over as coordinator in 2002, and for the many faculty who collaborate on coaching the students. We expect you to be creative. We want you to, to step out of your comfort zone, color outside the lines, and try a lot of new things. Putting that creative hat on and, and be honest with it and, and see what happens. Check us out on the web, come and visit. We'd really like you to be a part of it. It's a lot of fun, and if it's not fun, something's wrong. So come join us, we'll have fun. Mm -hmm.